Okay, so let's go ahead and think about this idea of vapor pressure. So vapor pressure is the pressure of uh, the liquid particles as they evaporate, uh, that they exert a pressure inside of a container uh, on that container because they are evaporating from the liquid. So we talked about in a previous video why molecules have the capacity to evaporate, and we talked about that with regards to this escape kinetic energy that they have. Right, so some, if we have molecules that are sitting on the surface and they have a kinetic energy that is greater than this escape kinetic energy, so all of those, that percent of molecules, they will go ahead and leave. So if we have some molecules leaving here, we're going to start to see a bunch of these gas particles sitting above our liquid. Now if we go back to this idea of Avogadro's law, if we look at the higher the number of gas particles, the higher the number, higher the pressure. Right? It's going to exert more pressure. So as we get more and more gas particles up here, they're going to exert a pressure. Now in this case, we're thinking of this being kind of a sealed container. So once they leave, they're not just going to go out and leave the space that the uh, liquid is occupying. Okay? And so since we've closed this off, we're looking at how these gas particles are going to exert a pressure. Okay? And so we'll see the number of moles of our vapor here that we have is going to be proportional to our vapor pressure. So the more particles we can get up here, the higher vapor pressure. And I think that makes sense with regards to gas laws that we previously talked about. So we want to think about what's happening here and what are the factors that affect this. Well, as our particles leave, they're all moving around. We're going to start to see, initially, we have a really high evaporation rate relative to our condensation rate. So we are going to see some particles that are going to condense back down. Right? So initially, we have high evaporation rate, low condensation rate. And that is because we just have a few particles in the gas phase. Once we start to see more and more particles coming out into the gas phase, that a condensation rate is going to start to increase. At some point, we're going to see they become equal to each other. At the place where our rate of evaporation equals our condensation rate, that's the place where we've reached an equilibrium. And what that means is that we're evaporating off at the same rate that we're condensing. And so we have an equilibrium amount or a constant amount of these particles sitting above our liquid. And at that place, we're going to have a constant vapor pressure. So we, we have the same number of particles leaving as they're coming back in. So that means we're going to have a constant number of particles sitting up here. And they're going to exert a vapor pressure. Okay. Now we look at what are some variables that would affect vapor pressure and what, wouldn't, what are some that are not. Well, if I were to say, for example, cut my volume in half, okay, well, the force exerted per unit area or per volume would be the same. So if I change my volume, that's not going to affect my vapor pressure. Whether I have a huge volume or a small volume is not going to affect it. Or if I think about the fact that maybe I have not as much liquid, okay, so we have fewer liquid down there, we're still going to have the same interface between the liquid and the gas, and we're going to have a constant vapor pressure. So we see the amount of liquid, the amount of space above the liquid don't affect our vapor pressure, nor would the fact that we were to spread this liquid out. If we were to spread the liquid out, we're going to have a higher evaporation rate because we've got more surface area per particles that could be leaving. But our condensation rate is also going to increase because we've got more surface area that those particles can come down and, and collide with as well. And so we see those variables of amount of liquid, surface area of the liquid, volume of the gas above the liquid are not going to affect our vapor pressure. The only variables that are going to affect our vapor pressure are the same ones we thought about when we talked about condensation, or excuse me, evaporation rates. Okay, so if we're looking at what are some factors that affect vapor pressure? Well, we talked about one in the last video, temperature. So if I increase the temperature, what does that do to my curve here, right? This is a specific temperature. If I go ahead and go to a higher temperature, we're going to have more higher kinetic energy particles. So now we have all of these particles that have a kinetic energy greater than my escape kinetic energy. And so what that's going to do is that is going to increase my vapor pressure no matter what the substance is. Okay. In addition to that, not only the temperature factor, but if we compare two liquids at the same temperature, like water versus maybe something like methanol or ethanol or acetone, okay? 
If we look at something related to that, we're going to see that it has to do with the escape kinetic energy. Okay. So if we look at comparing two things, maybe this is the escape kinetic energy of methanol. If we were to compare that to the escape kinetic energy of water, the escape kinetic energy of water is going to be greater. It's going to take more energy to break the attractions in water than it does in methanol. So this would be our water. Because of that, we now have fewer particles that can leave. Less particles are going to be able to get up into the gas phase. We're going to have fewer particles in the gas phase, and that's going to give us a lower vapor pressure. So if we have a higher or larger escape kinetic energy, that's going to lead to a lower vapor pressure. Okay, and that is because we're going to have fewer vapor particles sitting above our liquid because we don't have as many that can leave, right? We would only have these ones up here that could leave for water. So a fewer proportion of particles. In the previous video, we talked about, well, what are some factors that affect our escape kinetic energy? Right, one of them we said intermolecular force strength, and the second one is size. Right, the larger the particle, it makes sense, it's gonna have to take more kinetic energy for that particle to break away the attractions. And so then something that's really large is gonna have a low vapor pressure because it has a really high escape kinetic energy. Think about intermolecular force strength, if you think of something like water versus our methanol here. Water has stronger intermolecular force attractions as ability to undergo two hydrogen bonds. If it has stronger intermolecular force attractions, that is going to lead to higher escape kinetic energy, more energy for those particles to leave, lower vapor pressure, because we're going to see fewer particles sitting up here in the vapor phase. So hopefully this video helps us see the connection, the direct connection between this idea of vapor pressure and how it relates to rate of evaporation but at the same time, differentiating between them and saying, well, we also have a pretty good amount of condensation occurring when we're thinking about this idea of vapor pressure instead of just it evaporating off and leaving and going into the atmosphere.